And we have a series in the Battle of Alberta. The carnival ride that we're all on continues. I am thrilled to be on this ride. We are officially back in the McDavid watch, and he has cemented himself in the first two rounds as the best player in the playoffs right now. Look, Crosby had a really good go with the Penguins before his injury. There's been a couple other guys that have played strongly throughout the playoffs. But Connor McDavid, come on, how can you deny this guy? You can't stop him, you can't check him, you can't get in his way, you can't hold him, you can't trip him, you can't hook him. The guy is just a sheer force of will, and I still stand by what I say. It's as shallow as a kiddie pool, but that top six of the Edmonton Oilers, led by Connor McDavid, whoo! The Calgary Flames do not have an answer for it right now. Jacob Markstrom is backing into his net like he is panicked at every shot that comes his way. The Flames as a unit played a very good game today, I thought, but they were torched by the speed of the top six of the Edmonton Oilers and McDavid and Dreisaitl on the fast breaks. We said Edmonton would win these games in the transition. It is now 1-1. The series goes back to Edmonton. I think the Edmonton series is going to end up splitting 1-1 as well, too. I don't see any way this isn't going to go to 7, but I guess we'll have to wait and see and see how the next game plays out because it's just a game by game. So let's go ahead and let's talk about it. Now, the first thing to talk about is the rebound of Mike Smith. We talked about the Mike Smith roller coaster. Right now, we're on the top. Last game, we were on the bottom. Depends where you get Mike Smith, and it really depends what his team's going to do in front of him. I honestly believe that Mike Smith ends up rebounding in this game because of Connor McDavid and the confidence he gets out of McDavid. Look, two goals were taken away from him. You could see the fact that this could have been seven. We'll talk about all the goals. We'll talk about all the refing. We'll talk about the whistles, all those fun things, but we want to talk about Smith first. I believe Smith fed off that. I believe the 40-year-old veteran really does want to carry this for the city of Edmonton and his team. He does it tonight. He gets a beautiful assist. Mike Smith was no joke in terms of his career. He has had an all-star career. He has been a Team Canada goaltender, and you've heard me say this on this channel before. You play for Team Canada, you're automatically elite. Any other team in the world, including Team USA, you're good. But when you play for Canada, you are 100% elite at your position. So Mike Smith flashes some of that youth that he had before he captures lightning in a bottle. Great job by Smith and the Oilers. Now, you may be asking why I'm talking so much about Connor McDavid when Duncan Keith has three points. Leon Dreisaitl ends up having three points. Zach Hyman had a great game. There were a couple great games along the roster, but Jay Woodcroft made a really good coaching decision when they were down to nothing. He ended up shortening that bench. Uh, Kevin Bieksa said it the best. God, this this guy, is, he's like my spirit animal. He just gets it. He's like, yeah, you five guys on the bottom, just take a seat. Get some bench. Enjoy the splinters because we're about to roll our big horses. And he does it. Now, even though it was only two points, the contribution of Connor McDavid outside of those two points was felt throughout the entire team. Duncan Keith as well, rewinding the clock like Mike Smith. Looked like the old Duncan Keith. Zach Hyman, a beautiful goal there. Leon Dreisaitl, the one-legged pirate. I cannot believe this guy's speed even with one leg. Unbelievable job there by those guys. And it wasn't like the big boys in Calgary weren't going. The Gaudreau and Lindholm line was absolutely going. Matthew Kachuk was in fine form. Nothing wrong with Anderson or Hannafin, but at the end of the day, I think Calgary's got to win this game two ways. One, they've got to realize when they turn over pucks in the offensive zone, you've heard me say this, Edmonton scores from their defensive zone. That's how good they are on transition. So when Calgary turns over pucks in the offensive zone, they have to realize that Edmonton is coming and they need to either recover that puck faster or they actually need to change their tactics to what I call a 2-3, meaning you're only going to four-check with two guys and you want to have your centermen like Lindholm playing up near your defensemen. So you're actually going to stack three across the blue line to make sure that you don't get burnt a couple ways. And it's, it's not a bad offensive strategy at all either because it allows your centermen to observe the ice and find holes in the defense in order to sneak in. You just don't get three down low to go do work. Now, before we talk about the referees, I just want to give a big thanks and shout out to everybody. We are having a good old time on Discord tonight. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, you beauties. That was a really great three hours. Big fist bumps to everybody over there. Good time. We got donuts. I got donuts. Anyways... <laughs> 
Go ahead, give Coach Ryan D a big thumbs up. Join our Discord. We'd love you to hang out with us. We have a great crew of people over there, so it's a lot of fun to watch games with us together. Go ahead, smash that Discord invite down below. Come join us. Come say hi. And go ahead and give us a quick subscribe, Albertans, if you haven't done it yet. Prairie guys, we got to stick together, so go ahead, smash that subscribe during the Battle of Alberta here. We want to have you on this channel. And consider giving our members page a join down below. It's a great way to come support us. There's a couple nice perks that run with it as well, too. Or go ahead and consider using a super thanks. So big shout out to all our members as well. As always, now let's talk about goals. And let's talk about referees. In the playoffs, there's always a lot of rules that you have to explain. I'm not the best rules guy. You know this. I, I don't sit here and try to explain too many rules. But one I do know quite well is the referee's intention to blow the whistle. Now, whether I like this rule or not doesn't matter. And whether you like this rule or not doesn't matter. And whether or not you think the NHL should improve or not doesn't matter. I don't think the NHL does enough to listen to its fan base when it comes to what the fan base wants and what the fan base says would push the game forward. Regardless, there is a rule in the NHL that if the referee is intending to blow the whistle or in the process of blowing the whistle and all the referee has to say is, I intended to blow the whistle. He doesn't even have to blow it. He doesn't even have to have it near his mouth. He just has to say, I intended to blow the whistle. That's it. That's all he's got to do. And he doesn't have to justify it with anybody. He doesn't have to check in with anyone. He just says, no goal. It doesn't count. I intended to blow the whistle. You can't prove him wrong. So that's what ends up happening on the Edmonton goal that is disallowed. Calgary, ironically, gets one of those as well, too. I have not seen two of those in a game in quite some time. So a little bit of a carnival ride there. Thank you very much, referees. Always the big thumbs up to the referees in the league for their consistency and ability to make a very complex game even more complex and worse for everybody. And I can tell you, as a person who has no bias in the series because I'm a Jets fan, it doesn't matter. The league just stinks with this anyway, so these calls sucked, the referees sucked, the way the rule book is interpreted sucks, but it's still the best game on ice, isn't it? The other one to look at is the goalie interference. Now, again, I'm not the goalie interference guy, I'm not the rules guy. Was it goalie interference? Yeah, the league said it was, so shrug your shoulders and move on, but I don't know what goalie interference is, and the reason is, I can read the rule book. I can see the videos online that the NHL drops to say this or is or isn't goalie interference. And at the end of the day, it just feels like they change the call at any point in time. So McDavid gets a goal. I think for sure that's goalie interference. I think that was the right call. But I can't sit here and tell you that I haven't seen that called the other way just as many times. So just like you, if you watch the whole league as opposed to just one team, you may think it's only happening to you if it's just one team. Edmonton fans are chill now. They won the game anyway, so they're not too stressed about it. But look, I've seen it go both ways. I don't know which way they're going to review the call. And that is because of what we talked about yesterday. It's the referee's discretion. 119 times in the rule book, the word discretion. The only other one to talk about is remember when they said they were going to enforce cross-checking? And then Darnell Nurse cross-checked Tyler Toffoli, breaking his stick over him. And Tyler Toffoli looks at the ref like, are you serious? Yeah, I'm kind of with Toffoli. I don't understand hockey. And then Nurse goes to the bench, picks it up, gives a little love tap to Kit's face. He can't touch a guy's face. And that's what the ref calls? I don't understand it. Just call the initial cross-check and everything's fine. But maybe if he called the initial cross-check, the original goal wouldn't have gone in. It is crazy how the game can be changed because of the interpretation and opinion of a ref, but it doesn't change the outcome of the game. It's just part of the carnival ride that we're on. The players are still in control of 90%, 95, 95, 90, 95, 98% of the outcome of the game because the referee can't score a goal. And now before we go ahead and break down the goals, let me reintroduce you to one of our favorite segments. This is McDavid Watch. With your host, Coach Ryan D. That's right. Welcome back to the McDavid Watch. First goal of the game for Calgary here. It kind of looks like they're on a power play. Again, Edmonton gets caught running around. Darnell Nurse ends up losing his stick here. I mean, 
there's a broken one. Look, look, the cross checks, the cross checks. Like, this is what I don't understand. I get it's the playoffs. I get it's a battle. That was a beautiful goal, by the way. But just, I mean, take a look at this. Look at that battle in front of the net by Nurse. I love tough hockey. Like, he is really giving it to Kachuk. I don't blame him there. But I cannot believe that in the playoffs, the way the rules are called, there was like 15 penalties there. None of them are called. Maybe if they were called, that goal doesn't end up going in. So Nurse, couple real big battles in front of the net there with the likes of Kachuk. That goal was pretty simple. I mean, it ends up going to the top. Nice little fake shot that pulls it through. Smith can't see it. You can see it over here to the right-hand side. He's trying to battle through the carnival show that's happening here. Puck ends up coming through. Sneaks through everybody. It's got eyes. It's just a simple shot from the top. But this is a matter of the Edmonton Oilers running around in their own D zone, not holding any semblance of position. They're either looking to make hits or they're looking to leave the zone quick. It doesn't end up working out. Calgary's up one nothing. Base off theory here for goal two. Edmonton gets caught cheating. Okay, so you got a winger one. You got winger two. They're both circled. The guys with the X's here, these are your defensemen. The job on this one is, is that the defensemen need to tie up their players. So this is where the defenders are going in. They're either going to tie up their players or they're going to cover the front of the net. What the wingers need to do on this one is if it's a lost draw, meaning the puck ends up going back to the point, you have to have one winger out to the point and a second winger out to the point. As you can see, that draw ends up being won cleanly by Calgary out to the way back. And I don't know what you're doing here. I don't get it. That's not your job. He's going to back up and he's just going to fuck off outside the screen here for some unknown reason. And then we're just going to allow Calgary without tying it up to just kind of cruise through the middle here. And the defender is going to have to make his way up to the point because of the loss draw because his partner couldn't get up there to block the shot. I don't understand this one. So this is just massive confusion by Edmonton off the draw. Knowing where you're supposed to go off a draw and executing off a draw is the key to success. Calgary does it perfectly here offensively. Edmonton has no idea what they're doing. You can see they're all completely lost. Nobody's in position. No one has their man. Mike Smith, a little bit leaky here. He makes the save, but he can't cover up the rebound. He thinks he has it. They end up banking at home. Terrible, absolutely terrible face off in the defensive zone by Edmonton. Great job offensively by Calgary, but that's pretty much a free gift. Goal number one for Edmonton. Connor McDavid just wills his way through this one, battling down below. You can also see this battle here with Evander Kane. I mean, it's just like Matthew Kachuk. He takes some cross checks there from Darnell Nurse. Guys are going to go out of their way to cross check Kane and Keith Kachuk. Keith Kachuk, that's the old man. Matthew Kachuk, and I don't blame them. So, as you see here, this is why you can't stop McDavid. This is why it's the McDavid watch. It doesn't matter if you're in front of him. Look, he tries to bear hug him, hold him, and pull him, and it doesn't matter because McDavid with one hand, one hand and a stick is in between him, and anytime you see this play with the hands up, you know it's going to be there, and what are you doing? Just looking at this doing nothing, right? That's not a call. Why would you put your hands up for that? He may as well be signaling to you, call a penalty on me, but nothing ends up happening here. No hand goes up as you can see it. Connor McDavid, through the sheer force of will, makes a one-handed pass, and that ends up beating Jacob Markstrom because he likes to sit on his goal line and make himself super small this series. Big goal. Nice job, Edmonton. Just because it was that good, I'd really like you to appreciate it from this angle. Take a look at that. That is absolutely tied up there by Anderson. McDavid is able to throw it out there. Still, no call. What do they pay these guys for? <laughs> McDavid. Amazing. Goal number three by Calgary, the Darnell Nursey with no stick here. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're going to be on a penalty kill and you have no stick, I don't believe his stick is broken here. I think he just lost it. So you let me know down below in the comments if it was broken. I've looked at this a couple times. I can't remember if it broke or if he ended up just dropping it. But the reason I say that is because is if his stick isn't broken and it's in play, this is useless. There's no reason to sit down and lay down with one hand here like this. You're not going to be able to do anything. Anytime you lose your stick in the defensive zone, there are some coaches that say you should leave it and stay in the play and hold your position. I'm with the other group of coaches and it's split 50-50. Just leave the play and go pick up your stick. And if that's broken, you know what? Make the skate to the bench. At the end of the day, you are so useless without your stick that if you can't survive 10 seconds in this five on three and they end up scoring, it's just bad luck. Why stay out there for 20, 30, 40 seconds just to get scored on anyway because you don't have a stick? So the point of this is I don't like guys playing without a stick. I would rather they either pick it up or get to the bench and get that change because you can see here it just ends up feeding over and there's nothing nurse can do. What's he going to do? Go and push a guy? That won't help at all. 
Calgary ends up bearing it there 3-1, and it looks like, hey, is, is this going to be out of reach? But, hey, it's the carnival ride. We all knew they were going to come back, right? Right? Watching the greatness here that is Connor McDavid, we could spend hours breaking down how they widen the zone, all the tactics they use to enter it. You've seen the dog and pony show before. But what we need to see here is that this is why you can't take a run at a guy like McDavid. You just play contain. When you get too aggressive on McDavid, he is so strong in his state, skates, you have absolutely no chance. Look at this monster of a man. He just shakes it off like it's nothing ends up leaving unbelievable this is like Gretzky I mean you just end up bumping it out only to get the puck back that's why passing is amazing Zadorov is screwed Keith gets an easy assist here Markstrom has no chance on this so I've been hard on Markstrom this whole series on this goal there is no chance because like what are you gonna do what are you gonna do against that you can't stop this guy unbelievable and that was the best Connor McDavid goal I've ever seen since the last Connor McDavid goal I saw. The guy's a walking highlight reel. The West deadliest power play here. You end up seeing Duncan Keith get an assist over to his partner, Evan Bouchard. Like I said, I love two defensemen on the power play. I like four forwards, but I also love two defensemen. I'm not usually a huge fan of the big windups on stuff like this because the big windups allow the goalie to get a better angle. Now, the one thing that a big windup will do at times is it can freeze the goalie. So when you're a defenseman as opposed to a forward, the goalie has to respect the fact that you may be shooting here. The goalie also has to respect the fact that a slap pass is a very possible defenseman or very prone to that. So Bouchard winds up and then just lays a rocket that ends up going past Markstrom. It's not much you're going to be able to do on that on an Edmonton power play. The key is they scored with one second left, so they continue to be on the power play here. You definitely don't want to let Edmonton go into the power play at any point in time. And this was the end of the game for Calgary, in my opinion. Game winning goal. You make a mistake in the offensive zone. Quick little stick on it there. And it is over, baby. So a nice little stick ends up picking it. And like I said, the most deadly the Edmonton Oilers are going to be is when the Edmonton Oilers are in their own defensive zone. So this is a dangerous place Edmonton can score from their own zone because they leave with incredible speed and transition. All the Oilers in the top six, they're gonzo. Zach Hyman ends up breaking in on this one. Free and clear. Zach Hyman ends up breaking in on this one. Free and clear. Look at Markstrom ending up backing in. Like Markstrom just takes away. He gets so small. So small. I don't know why he shrinks himself in his butterfly like that. Of course that goes over top of him. Where else did you think that was going to go, Jacob? Like, you get so tiny, he leaves open almost the entirety of the top of the net. And you don't think a player like Hyman can't go bar down skis on you? What are you so worried about down low? Get out of your crease. Get big. Challenge him. What a great goal by Hyman. What a great fast break by Edmonton. The final one here. How about Mike Smith playing the puck? You hear me say this all the time. Just stay in your net. Don't play the puck. Why would you play that? Oh, man, if I have to hear more comments or guys in the stands telling goalies to stay in their net, I'm going to lose my brain. It just melts it. Goalies need to play the puck. Look at that beautiful play there by Smith. When your goalie plays the puck, you get a much larger advantage. So this is Smith's assist here. Connor McDavid ends up looping down low after Smith makes that play. But it is Leon Dreisaitl who had just rockets the one-legged man. He is gone, as you can see. Absolutely no chance. What is going to end up happening here? Oh, I don't know. A tiny Jacob Markstrom again. Shrink yourself. Bar down. So that's it. 1-1 series tie. Tons of highlights to go around. Calgary has the game in the grasp. Unfortunately, they get burnt on the transition game. They get burnt by the speed of the Oilers. Two breakaways there by the Oilers. Markstrom doesn't handle them. Hey, look goalies on breakaways it's tough but the goalie still has an advantage and the goalie still has a job to do so are you going to say that markstrom's fault isn't this game i mean the goalie's got to bail you out at some point in time so your team d's got to not give up those breakaways but you also don't need to be shrinking yourself down to the size of a poly pocket in that net and leaving so much net he just knows how to play better than that i've watched markstrom play better than this all year it is something about the oilers and it's something about speed that he just doesn't handle well. When that speed is coming at him, he just shrinks back into his net. So it's tough. If Calgary wants to win this series, Markstrom is going to have to find himself because Calgary is not going to win a series in a race to eight. Are they? Maybe they are. I have no idea what's going to happen in this series, to be honest, at this point. All we knew is that the Edmonton Oilers would play their top six. We knew the transition game would end up killing them. We knew the power play would end up killing them. We knew Calgary plays good team defense, and we knew... Calgary plays a good team game with high Corsi. So we've seen all of that hold true. I'm just very surprised at the performance of Markstrom. I mean, 11 goals. 
That's not Markstrom. Tough to win a series when that's going to occur. 